Hello, my name is Alana Jones and my project asks, how do dendritic properties impact neural computation? So, what do neuroscience and deep learning models have in common? Neurons. Historically, the first mathematical models of neurons were linear weighted sums mapped through a threshold nonlinearity. Neuron modeling has moved, has since moved toward more empirically detailed models of single neurons, while deep learning has moved toward complex neural, neural network architectures while keeping the abstracted point neuron model largely the same. The aim in deep learning is to perform complex tasks at or above human levels, whereas in neuron modeling and neuroscience, the aim is to fit empirical recordings to produce descriptions of neurons that predict neuronal phenomena. These similarities and differences are sources of tension as we try to build a bridge between these two fields. Within this tension, we might ask certain questions such as, why can't our neural models perform complex deep learning tasks? Is it because neurons are very simple and have low computational capacity? And why aren't ANN models that perform complex tasks brain-like or neuron-like? Can more neuron-like models even perform complex tasks? But zooming out, we can acknowledge that for neural modeling, there is a spectrum of biological realism. The McCulloch and Pitts neuron on the far end of abstraction is on the far end of abstraction for neurons. By adding more empirical details, we can move toward biologically realistic models of neurons. Neuron models now balance realism and abstraction in order to ask certain kinds of questions. What I want to do is to introduce ANNs to this neuron modeling spectrum by asking if we can start with an ANN and introduce dendritic constraints to make the ANN more neuron-like. What we might learn is how each of the qualitative dendritic constraints impacts ANN performance and if the resultant neuron-like models can even do complex ML tasks. If we assume that neurons are quite limited in their computational capabilities because of its biological qualities, we might hypothesize that adding biological properties to move toward biological realism will impair ANN performance. So now, so now I'll talk about constraints we added. This work spans two papers. We take a fully connected ANN with ReLU activation functions first. Then, the dendritic trees, we acknowledge that the dendritic trees are binary branching trees. We impose a strict form of that binary branching structure as a constraint. This constraint is the basis for arguing that our model is a neuron-like compartment model. Secondly, individuals' presynaptic neurons have been observed to synapse multiple times onto the dendritic tree of a single postsynaptic neuron, introducing synaptic repetition. We impose a strict form of that synaptic repetition into our model as well. Thirdly, in the second paper, we replace the leaky ReLU activation function with a voltage-gated ion channel inspired dendritic nonlinearity. Fourth, we introduce the synaptic nonlinearity at the inputs of the dendritic tree to transform the input values into units of millivolts. And fifth and lastly, we acknowledge that if given the first constraint, that our, our model is like a compartmental neuron model, then the nodes of the model are compartments connected by axial conductances. These conductances only make sense if they are non-negative, so we impose non-negativity on the weights connecting each node. As we progress through this project, we will add each constraint on top of others. In the first paper, the experimental neuron model we added structural constraints to was compared to two control models a point neuron-like neuro linear classifier as, in, as an expected lower bound, and a parameter size mesh FCNN or fully connected neural network as an expected upper bound. All models were made to perform a binary classification task for seven different data sets, but we will only be showing the results for binary classification version of MNIST. On the right, the x-axis is the number of synaptic repetitions and the y-axis is the accuracy on the binary classification task. The linear classification is on the right, the, in gray is the FCNN, and the, in black is the neuron model. At one synaptic repetition, we're only looking at the effects of constraint one, which performs better than the linear classifier, but worse than the FCNN. 
As we increase synaptic repetitions, performance improves in at extreme levels of repetition, the model performs at the level of our FCNN. Our takeaway is that this compartment model-like neuron model can still perform ML tasks, even with these very strict constraints. This opens up the possibility of adding even more constraints. Moving on, the second paper begins by determining the impact of replacing the ReLU activation function with the dendritic nonlinearity. The formulation of the nonlinearity can be found in the paper, and we build upon the neuron model introduced in the previous paper. We compared the dendritic nonlinearity to other kinds of activation functions depicted here on the left. Here, with repetitions in the x-axis and accuracy on the y-axis, we can see that the dendritic nonlinearity in gray performs better than most other activation functions in our neuron model. Interestingly, in this figure, we did the same experiment only with a comparable, only with a comparable parameter size matched FCNN model. And we see that ReLU and Leaky ReLU perform much better than other nonlinearities, flipping our result in a more traditional de deep learning context. The takeaway is that it seems our dendritic nonlinearity constraint works best with other neuronal neuronal constraints. Next, we've added two more constraints, which is synaptic nonlinearity and non-negative conductance weights on top of the dendritic nonlinearity constraint in both our neuron-like model and the FCNN model. Adding non-negative conductance in the bottom graph in yellow led to a major drop in performance, but this was rescued in orange by adding synaptic nonlinearity. Both constraints together in orange perform better than adding synaptic nonlinearity alone in black. Our takeaway is that with the added synaptic repetitions, all neuron-like models perform better than the comparable FCNNs, which are in red and pink, with, uh, yeah. In conclusion, Iteratively adding biological constraints does not unilaterally improve learning and computation. However, we show that combining all constraints we implemented improves performance overall. Steps toward neuronal biological realism does not necessarily eliminate an ANN's ability to, to learn ML tasks. And with that, thank you very much. And I acknowledge, I thank everyone in the courting lab for their help. If you have questions, contact me. Thank you.